Hi everybody, this is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and I'm here with my co-host, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Or Purdy Kuda. Yeah. Is that, your ga- is that your, like, for gaming? Yeah. Or gaming? Yeah. Okay. Back in my World of Warcraft days, I just kept oh. the name. Yeah. And, um... So today we thought we would talk about haunted castles. So it's, it's like I love the I love the concept of a haunted castle. I mean, a castle should be haunted, right? So yeah, yeah, should be. Yeah, they should be. They should have. I mean, they're hundreds of years old. Some of them are a thousand years old or more, and it's like they should be just packed full of ghosts. I want to live in a haunted castle. I don't. Oh, I do. That'd be I so cool. No. <laughs> it's not, it's so, not the ghost. Well, the ghosts would probably bother me, but it's the heating and the electricity bills that will kill you. Well, you got me there. That's true. <laughs> so the first uh, castle that you wanted to talk about is, uh-oh, let's see. I'm trying to bring it up here. I think it is this one. Yes. Good old Musham Castle. Yeah. What is it called? Musham Castle. It, what, so what's the deal with this castle? Um, well, this castle used to be an old Roman fortress, but they just built around it. And first record was in 1911. It's been upgraded and extended since then. Um, it sits at the height of 3,500 feet. And for our um, our European listeners, it's one point are 1.08 kilometers and it sits on a rocky spur it's a strategical point where is it located what country where are we at um austria austria that is absolutely stunning it's it's pretty yeah, it's pretty so um when i was doing some digging um i found um there's been like a lot of battles going um that happened over in the uh, in this castle however the worst the worst part of this was the zuber zuber earl J- jackal trial i don't know what that means in austrian so here we go um as the story goes a woman by the name of barbara Kolarin was arrested for the crimes of theft and sorcery during her trial her partner paul kathan cal kathan patcher admitted that her son paul and wait uh, paul jacob kohler made a pact with the devil and the hunt for jacob was on later in 1677 authorities got report that jacob was dead but a homeless handicapped boy by the name of Feldner told the authorities that he was in contact with Jacob shortly before his arrest. He told them that Jacob was a leader of a gang of homeless kids in the slums and that he taught them black magic, which resulted in the arrest of many children and teenagers. Uh-oh. Yeah. So That's so good. Yeah. So during the interrogation, the story of Jacob, or Jackal, as he was known in the streets, um, the stories of him grew and grew and grew, and the authorities got scared. So, yeah, so he's, this kid tells him about Jackal or Jacob or whatever, and they're like, oh, we practice black magic and stuff, and, and this and that, and all sorts of stuff and um yeah it took off like wildfire so what happened to the kids i'm getting to that Ugh. in the end 139 people were executed oh my one god as young as 10 years old and one as old as 80 and mm. i'll skip the brutal stuff let's just say it was a dark time for that what um, what year was this 1677. Oh, yeah. So right around the witch trials everywhere in the yeah. world, right? Yep. God dang it. 
Yeah. Poor kids. So after a while, the castle fell into disrepair uh, until a man by the name of Wilzek bought the castle and returned it to his former, his, its former glory, bringing his extensive art collection with him. Hmm. Um, so that's that. But there's a bonus story, and it's about a bailiff by the name of Anton, who at the time was ruling the castle with an iron fist, and he was known for his cruelty. He took great pleasure in torturing prisoners, and apparently he was a real jerk to his parents, too. So, one night, after admiring his work in the dungeons, an awful thought popped into his head, and at this time, it was a raging storm was coming, that was going on outside. You know, thunder, lightning, rain, the whole shebang. Spooky, spooky stuff. He shook it off, went upstairs to his apartment to have a drink and relax. Um, during this time, a carriage pulled by four black horses approached the gate and opened if it went by magic. Anton was about to doze off when he heard a loud banging on his apartment door. When he answered the door, a man in all black stood there and said, Good night, my dear man. I have come from hell. And my, prin and my prince told me to prepare you for your, your journey. Anton pleaded with the man, but he wouldn't listen, grabbed him by the scruff of the you know, scruff of his collar, dragged him away and threw him into the, uh, the carriage and took him away. So. Wow. Yeah. So. So he. If anybody's watched, watched Darby O'Gill and the little people. Remember yeah. the scene where the Banshee comes to the house and screams in his face. And then you see the carriage. With yeah. The four horses come in. Yeah. That's what I, I, yeah, that's what I thought. I was thinking that same thing when I read that story. I'm like, this sounds like Darby O'Gill and the little people. So wait a minute. So was he hauled off? Yeah. Then how did we get the story? <laughs> that's where my analytical head goes, right? It's yeah. like now, then who, who, anyway, that's <laughs> interesting. So the four horsemen of the apocalypse or something, right? Yeah. No. It's kind of interesting. No, it's a it's a funeral coach. Yeah, 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 funeral coach. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Is there anything else on the castle? No, just a, just a lot of bloody battles Man. way back when, and then then those those witch trials. Man, they killed a lot. They tortured. I can't them. believe how many they killed, and were they killed inside the castle grounds? Yes, they were. Kept mm. prisoner in the castles and and tortured and then executed in the castles. You know, something like that, it's not just warfare. You have innocent people being killed. And that's where you, I mean, in, in battle, you expect to die, right? You're a warrior, yep. you expect to die. But a child? Yeah, you, you're just a kid it, trying yeah, to so, survive and right. somebody... Runs their mouth. Next thing you yep. know is you're you're in a dungeon getting tortured, and you didn't do yep. anything wrong. Yep, it's it's terrible. So um, I have a castle, and I'm going to share my screen. So it is should be this one here. Okay, so this one is. Drags home castle, and um, it is uh, Copenhagen area. Oh, so, Germany. yeah, so it was built um, by the Bishop of Roskilde. Ro I, I slaughter every name I come across, so sorry. Yeah, me too. So. Ro Roskilde around twelve fifteen. So. It's a very old castle, um, obviously built during the Middle Ages that was, or I mean, it, during the Middle Ages, it was modified from the original palace and they, uh, to a fortified castle. And it's about 50 miles west of Copenhagen. Um, it's on a slip of ground that, um, a narrow strip of land known as a drag. And why it was called a drag, um, 
is because the Vikings could drag their ships across the strip of land and then sail, get back into the water instead of sailing all the way around this like big, huge peninsula, um, very narrow strip of land, and they can just drag it. So their ships. I thought that was interesting. The, so the, um, that's why it's called Drag's Home. Uh, da, da, da. The castle is said to feature a hundred ghosts or more. Um, so again, I oh, want to go and I want to stay there and I want to experience it. Um, many visitors and psychics have heard voices. They've seen apparitions. The Bishop of Roskilde, uh, Renault, is said to be one of the ghosts that haunt the castle. Um, he was the last Catholic bishop in this area, but he lost everything during the Protestant Reformation. He was imprisoned by the Danish king, and he was held at this castle, where he was confined to a room on the second floor. He eventually passed away there, and um, people who... So now people can stay in the castle, right? It's like a, it's like a hotel, and if you are in this room, people, a lot of visitors who are unfortunate or fortunate, depending on your view, enough to get into this room and stay for the night, you probably will see him. So that's cool. I want that room. <laughs> I just... Oh, it is so cool. Um, another ghost who's routinely spotted at the castle is Selena Bovels. Bovels? She was, she's known as the White Lady of the castle. And she was born into a wealthy Danish aristocratic family. And she was betrothed to the eldest son of another noble family. As the story goes, she fell in love with a commoner, not, not the other, the nobleman, and uh, who worked in the castle. So um, when her father found out, he was really... He was not very happy with her because, you know, the whole the whole wedding situation back then was to provoke to get more power and more wealth. Everybody was married off for more power and more wealth and more more land and more soldiers and everything else. So um, she continued to see her lover until she was married. She ended up having to marry the guy that she didn't love. And unfortunately, she became pregnant by the commoner before the wedding. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, enraged, her dad imprisoned her in this castle. And um, this is just hor horrific. He put her in a room and then walled her off like bricks. Yeah. And left her to die. <sighs> yeah. So, she's um, apparently... They were modern. This was just like said to be like kind of a legend, but if, but when they were modernizing the castle and putting in new plumbing and new electricity, new everything else, they discovered her skeletal remains in the walled off section when they had that's, to remove the wall. Horrible. Yeah. So she's she haunts the castle and she's apparently seen roaming the halls and crying. Because of what happened to her. I can't... It's horrific. It's horrific. So, yeah, you yeah. know... Yeah. <laughs> How mad do you have to be at your kid to wall them up and just leave them there to die? I know. I know. It, it was terrible. It was a different was, time back then. It's like, it sure was. So, uh, let's see. Which... Where do you want to go next? Um... Let's try to. Did we, which one were we? You want to do Leap want, Castle, or wh can, where are you? I can do Lep. Yeah, Lep is. Lep. Was a okay, good let one. me get to that one. All right, this one is one of my favorites. What? Yeah, I, I remember seeing this on a. I think it was a Travel Channel show, and they, they did uh, the whole history and everything. It was really super interesting. That's why I remember it. But okay, so. This might bounce around here a little bit here and there, but so here we go. So all right, this has got to be the spookiest castle I have ever heard of. In and around 250 AD, this castle was built and ruled by the feared O'Carroll clan. 
and it's about two miles from the town of Roscrea. Roscrea? Um, so this all started when two brothers of the O'Caro clan challenged each other to, to, for leadership of their clan. And they all, both of them, jumped off of this huge rock. And whoever survived got to uh, control the clan. And that's where the name came from, is they leapt from the rock. So, Lep Castle. Um, and, however, there was a much more powerful clan in the area, and that was the O'Carrolls. And the oh, I thought you were going to say O'Hara. That would have no. been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome, but no. <laughs> okay, O'Harrell? O'Carroll. O'Carroll, okay. So, the O'Carrolls liked the, the castle so much that they just took it from them. They did. No. Um, the O'Carrolls kept the castle until 1649 when it was passed to the Darbys by marriage. Um, let's see. And, okay, so there's some hidden treasure in there in the castle. Well, let's, uh, hang on, let's do the Bloody Chapel. In, in 1532, Mulrooney O'Carroll, Orca Orca the clan leader, died, and Thaddeus O'Carroll was the family priest and next in line. This didn't sit well with his little brother, one-eyed Tish O'Carroll. One day during Mass, Tish plunged his blade into his brother's back. Thaddeus bled out in front of his own family. His ghost still haunts the chapel and lights the room. He occasionally lights the the uh, chapel up here and there. So, yeah. Oh, man, this... This, uh, this family, man. When I was digging into it, man, this family is just the worst dysfunctional family I've ever heard of. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay, so in the 17th century, during the English Civil War, Jonathan Darby and two accomplices hid treasure on the grounds. Uh, Jonathan ended up killing the two men to help, that helped him to keep it a secret. Later, Darby was arrested for treason, and after his release, much of the castle has been changed so much he couldn't find it again. So, <laughs> there's that. Now we get to the we get to the uh, really gruesome part of this this place. So in 1922, workers found a deep hole in the ground hidden behind the chapel. The cartloads of bones were removed from this little from this little dungeon. Cartloads. So 150 human remains were found. Wow. A pocket watch dating from the mid-1800s was also found, meaning that it was used pretty recently. Wow. So, uh, like a pauper's grave? An oubliette? Like a pauper's grave? Like... Uh, no. No? No. Do you know what an oubliette is? No. Oh. <laughs> but... An oubliette is a little French word for a place of forgetting. It's where you took people oh. that you don't like and toss them in a hole. Oh. They fall down the hole and land on sharp wooden spikes at the bottom. So they Ooh. push you, yeah, yeah. you fall, and if you were lucky, you hit the spikes oh. and you died immediately. If oh, you were terrible. unlucky and Missed the spikes. You starved to death down there. And what, and what they a lot of these castles did was they put an oubliette in a corner of a dining hall. So you go you go there. The king goes get rid of them. You get tossed down a hole. 
And if you were lucky, you, you died instantly. If you were unlucky, you had to sit there for a week while they had, they held banquets and. And you're starving to death. And you're starving. And all you can smell is all that food. So real nasty business. Well, how, how deep is a hole for a hundred and did they die? And then they bring them out of the hole and put them in another hole. Cause 150 bodies, that's pretty, it's yeah. a lot of space. Yeah, it's a lot of space. So I'm guessing I don't. I, they went. They might have went in there every once in a while and like cleaned them all the out, put them off in the, another hole, off the stakes, and just chucked Ugh. them in a corner. Yuck. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine that being your job, the oubliette cleaner. No, no. Mm. You know the fascinating. Do you have more about the castle? Because I have some paranormal stories about it. But I got one more. And this, okay. is that, this is the part of the sh that show that I watched that creeped me out the most. Yeah. And that was the story of the elemental that roams the property. Yes. And the theory is, is that long before the castle was um, built, the land belonged to the Druids. And they, they thought it was a special place because there was both ley lines there and the ground was really super fertile. So some people think they conjured up the elemental to protect the land, while others think someone else conjured up the elemental to get revenge on the O'Carrolls that were running the castle. So it doesn't show up unless it's challenged. And whatever you, whatever you think, don't challenge it. Um, somebody said that they saw this thing and they described it as the size of a sheep, thin and shadow like with a face that looked human, but was not. And it also came with a putrid stench of a de decomposing body. So with that old TV show that I watched, they kind of made up what this elemental thing looked like. And it was just. Oh, ew, ew. that's that's fascinating. I, so there are a lot of pictures online, and this is one that shared. That's uh, some of the images people take when they are at the castle. Um, this is, very clearly looks to me skeleton human. I mean it. Yeah, it looks. It's it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, or human, but it looks more skeletal than anything else to me. But um, the elemental pictures, and I've seen, um, I've seen different um, shows that have been there, right? And they're doing investigations there. And those elementals, um, it's pretty interesting because they've gotten the lights out in the forest dancing around, and those uh, seems like they are definitely protective of the castle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. No, I wouldn't want to challenge that thing at all. Not at all. Okay, so my um, cast next castle that I'm going to talk about is the Castle of Good Hope in South Africa. And um, this is the castle. It's pretty interesting uh, structure, the way they built it. And... <clears throat> It has some, it was definitely built um, as a, you know, a fortress. It was in 1666 through 1697, how it took, you know, a long time for him to build. It consisted mostly of clay and timber, and it was built actually to supply ships that were um, passing the, the coast around the Cape, so uh, they could stop there and get some supplies but it was also obviously as all castles are used as a prison yeah and um there's a bell tower that was added to the castle in 1684 and that was used to ring when they would ring the bell and the bell is still there um in certain pictures you can see it but when the bell and i think it's actually you can see it right in the very front of this castle there's uh, something, uh, an object that's sticking up. Let me see if I yeah, can. That, yeah, that's a bell tower. Yeah, that's the bell tower. So um, that 
they would ring that when there was problems anywhere to alert people. And apparently you could hear that bell for s several miles and it would alert people to get to the castle and that something was going down, right? So 1684, the bell tower was added. And then eight, 1899 to 1902, <laughs> they added um, a torture chamber to the castle, you know, because why not? Um, it was you can't called be a castle without a torture chamber. Everybody I know, that. right? You can't be proper without torture. So it's Donker Gat, which means the dark hole, and it was a windowless dungeon. And sometimes in the winter, it floods with water all the way to the ceiling. So any prisoners held in there are going to drown because there's no way out. Sounds par for the course. Yeah, you know. Um, but at least it wasn't that thing you told me about at Lep Castle. I don't know which is worse, right? Um, workers and visitors report hearing voices and footsteps in the windowless dungeon, which, which is still there. And the bell tower apparently will sometimes ring on its own, and people hear it for miles. Um, and then there's a legend that says that there was a soldier that... There used to be a long rope that you would ring the bell, right? And now that area is bricked off, and it's just the bell up there. I don't know that the bell is functional like there's any way to ring it anymore because the rope is gone. And it's heavy. The wind's not going to knock that thing around. Those things are heavy. Yeah. And I actually lived in, in um, a town in Pennsylvania where they still make those giant bells, and like the Liberty Bell and all those bells. Those things are amazing. They're so big. And so the legend says that a soldier once hung, hanged himself by the rope. And so he's the one who's ringing the bell. Even though, uh -huh. yeah. Um, there's also a vicious black dog that is said to haunt the castle grounds. It lunges at people and it's snapping and lunging at people and then it disappears. So that mm. would be terrifying. Yeah, that's not the first time I've heard of a black dog haunting Yeah. Um, like grounds like this before it's just it's there it might be protecting something or it's just being a being a yeah. bad dog I, yeah i don't know i mean a lot of people associate that black dog with a demonic spirit i tend to think it's more i don't know i, I don't know that it's necessarily demonic but it's usually it's not good it's not yeah, good. It's more, I think it's more of a warning because if you've ever listened to, I don't know if you ever saw that movie way back when, I think it was a Patrick Swayze movie and it was called, uh, I think it was called Black Dog. And he was a semi truck driver. And I, I never saw it, but I just remember seeing the uh, trailer for it. And he was a truck driver. And he's driving down the road. He starts nodding off. And as soon as he he's doing this, and then he snaps and comes to, and he sees a black dog in the middle of the road. And then bad things start happening to him. And somebody is like, well, what, you know, what happened? And he's like, told him I was falling asleep. I came, when I snapped back into reality. There's a black dog in the middle of the road. And they're like, oh, no. <laughs> so, and then they tried to fix it. But... Yeah, I heard a lot of story. Well, a lot of stories. A lot of truckers saying, you know, I was nodding off at at the wheel because over the road truckers, you know, yep, it it's a straight line most of the time. So they start nodding off, and they come to they either see a black dog running um, along the side of their truck, or they see one in the middle of the road, and that's kind of a that's kind of a warning to. Pull over somewhere, get coffee. Yeah. Get arrested. Yeah, that's true. Because, yeah, you're going to kill somebody. Yeah. Um, and people have also claimed to see a tall man leaping off the castle walls, like the top. They'll, they're there visiting the castle and touring it, and then this guy plunges to his death. Um, if, and then... Um, Obviously, he's not really there. So when you run over there, to, and then he disappears. A man and a woman are frequently heard arguing in one of the guards' rooms. And 
uh, if people go to check it out, then they see like a shapeless figure in the room, and then it disappears. And then there are still soldiers that this is still um, so I don't know if it's an active like castle, but there's still soldiers that guard it. Apparently, according to what I've read, I don't know if that's if it's if they really are there now. But and so at night, the soldiers pat they avoid any of the archways. They won't pass in front of them because they always feel like something's going to come out and get them. And and it so they will walk to an arch and then back. They don't they won't walk like through across that arch opening there, like in the front or any of the archways. They don't like them. Well, they I feel thought like that they're was gonna get ambushed. Yeah, I don't know. No, it sounded more paranormal. Like um, they fear uh, restless souls will come through those archways. So, um, Lady Anne Bernard also haunts the castle. She lived there until the late 18th century, and as the first lady, she it had you know her job was to entertain really important guests that came to the castle, and apparently even today, if they have more distinguished guests that are coming to the castle to visit it, she will make an appearance because that's her job. Yep. Um, and then Governor Peter G Gisbert Van Noot. I Again, names. Um, he was very strict, and he is said to haunt the castle. He sentenced seven men to death on April 23rd, 1728, and he refused to grant the prisoners' last wishes before hanging them. And so one of the prisoners cursed Van Noot, and he was found uh, dead in his office that same day after they were hanged, and the guy cursed him. He apparently had a heart attack. So today, workers and visitors hear him cursing and swearing inside the castle walls. <sighs> uh, wow! Yeah, and on the same day too, they're like, "Well, you're good." And they're like, "They're like, well, you're gonna die." And they're like, "Can I get my last? You know, can I get my last wish?" And he's like, "Nah." Right? And they're, he's, they're like, "All right, well," and yep. then he dies in his office. I know. So, well, there you that's that. So you had one last castle to share, right? Yeah, uh, Berg Elt. Uh, I got a castle up here. It's a beautiful castle. It is. And, you know, I was looking at, yeah, see that? See that? That is... It's really that spectacular. That is a fairy tale castle right yeah. there. That's yeah, it what, is. Mm-hmm. So, um, sitting in the hills of Wiersheim, Wiersheim, Germany, W's or V's in, in German, is a castle sitting on a 230 foot high rock spur and a tray. And it's still there and you can take tours. Um, but it comes with a tragic story. Agnes Eltz, daughter of the 15th Count's Count of Elts was a tomboy of sorts. She loved to play warrior with her brothers. Agnes was promised to the Knight of Bronzeburg. They occasionally met to uh, get to know one another, but Agnes thought he was boring and dull, so she ignored him. <laughs> Good girl. This, uh, this angered the Knight. So one night, at a festive gathering, the knight pulled Agnes onto the dance floor and kissed her. Agnes got so angry, she smacked him across the face. The Good knight girl! The knight became <laughs> so infuriated, he left the castle. Of course, the family became concerned and doubled the guards. Pretty soon, the days became weeks, weeks into months, and the, fa the family finally thought that the knight gave up and became disinterested. So the men in the family left for a week-long hunting trip. This was the chance that the knight was waiting for. The same night, the knight and his men enter entered the courtyard and killed the guards. Um, when Agnes saw what, she, what was happening, she leapt into action, donning her brother's helmet, breastplate, and battle axe. Brave little Agnes went to meet the knight head-on, which startled him. He didn't know who this guy, who this person was that that's running up mm. on him. 
the knight fired his crossbow into the soldier, and the bolt killed it and killed him instantly. When he went to the uh, see who his uh, opponent was, he removed the helmet and revealed that it was poor little Agnes. So, fight the warrior girl. Yeah. So the same family isn't the same family has main owned this castle and maintained it for like eight centuries. Yeah. Yeah. So there have been other spooky things going on. Um, Agnes is seen in the countess room every once in a while, and she roams the halls and she likes to turn on, turn off and on the lights. And opening and closing doors. There's also been a report of childlike laughing in the castle. Mm. And there's also reports of a phantom knight at the front gates. Some people yeah. think that it's the knight looking looking for Agnes's forgiveness. Mm. So Yeah, that's um th that's mm. These stories are just amazing, but the castles themselves, that they're still here, and they, they're still here, and they're still functioning, and people are still maintaining them. And Yeah, you can that's, go and see them on tours. They're still yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's very cool. And, and the fact that it's the same family, I mean, it's, yeah. I think that's that's fascinating to me. It's the same family. They're still in charge of this castle, so, um Yeah. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed these stories. I uh, I love haunted castles. If you've been to any of them or all of them, let us know. Or if you've been to another one that just was trippy with paranormal activity, let us know. Of course, you have the the what if you want to call it infamous Transylvanian castle out there. I that's uh, a friend who actually lived in Transylvania for. I want to say close to 20 years. And um, he's told me some pretty amazing stories. I wish I could get him on the show, but he's, yeah, he, mm. he doesn't want to talk about them because they were pretty trippy. He said they were, they were pretty scary to him. So anyway. Yeah. I can't remember the name of that castle. I know I looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. It's, it's such, it's such a dark history of that castle. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed the show. Um, Hang with us, and we'll keep bringing you content, and we, we really enjoy it. Please like and subscribe. Please share the shows. We need all of that. It does help us. Um, you know, we don't, we're a paranormal group. We don't charge for any paranormal uh, investigations or any of the work in the community. When people call us in to help, to ask for help, we never charge for anything like that. So if we can make a dime once in a while off of YouTube, that would be awesome for us to help us replenish some of our equipment that always breaks on an investigation, no matter how careful you are. So anyway, like and subscribe, share. And that's mm -hmm. it for us. Good night, everybody. Or good morning. Bye.